Iceberg videos are enormously successful on this platform. I'm well aware of this, because this format literally made me. You got icebergs about video games, conspiracy theories, TV shows, music, and even my pretentious ones that basically act as a framing device for miscellaneous pieces of information. So what are these videos? Why are they so popular? And where did they come from? What is going on? Icebergs are a natural phenomenon with a weirdly arbitrary criteria to count as such. But most importantly, it's responsible for the expression tip of the iceberg in reference to the fact that most of the iceberg lies below the surface. None other than Sigmund Mommy Issues Freud used an iceberg metaphor to illustrate the relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind. As with any well-known idea, the internet caught wind of it pretty early and started making memes. This meme depicts websites, from the most popular among regular people, all the way down to the most depraved illegal stuff. This was uploaded to Imgur in May of 2011, and is the earliest known example of the iceberg meme format on the internet. Fast forward to 2019, years after the first instance of this meme, it starts getting some real traction from threads on the 4chan video game, music, and paranormal boards, with Anons posting all kinds of different charts and comparing how obscure their interests are. This format offered us something that previous memes did not. It was a framing of topics that people already used, but couldn't depict visually in this way. The reason this meme can be applied to anything is because almost any topic can be organized from normie to nerd. There are the most pedestrian things that anyone with a vague awareness of the topic would probably be familiar with. Then there are the more esoteric things that only the initiated dweebs could even dream of. Pretty much every iceberg meme uses this photograph of an iceberg by Ralph A. Clevenger, which is often used in these extremely corny motivational posters. Through licensing fees, this image has netted Ralph nearly a million dollars. But as it turns out, this isn't a photograph at all. It's four separate photographs. The sky, the water, the top of the iceberg, and the bottom of the iceberg. The bottom is actually the top of an iceberg in Alaska, but all of this was photoshopped together to look like a single image. Ralph actually incorporated this photoshopping strategy quite a lot in his work, with mixed results. And then, just over two years ago, this video dropped. The Super Mario 64 Iceberg Explained. This changed everything. Instead of having to decipher these memes yourself by googling a million different things, you can just turn to this gentleman on YouTube to explain everything for you. You can now access all the useless knowledge contained in these MS Paint edits at the click of a button. This video absolutely popped off, so this format became a YouTube trope, much like tier lists. Everyone wanted to get in on the action. Some creators even managed to leverage this format into their brand, achieving great success making almost exclusively iceberg videos. But why does it work? Another YouTuber by the name of Colin Howarth made a video about this and suggested a few things. His first point is that if we're interested in a particular topic, like Mario 64, and an iceberg of that topic pops up, we'll probably click on it. But I'm not sure this fully accounts for the success of the format. I received a number of comments on my iceberg videos from people claiming to know absolutely nothing about the topic, but ended up watching the whole video anyway. There's something intrinsically alluring about obscure or esoteric knowledge as such. It's like you've been invited into a secret club with only the most dedicated enthusiasts. Even the word esoteric comes from the ancient Greek adjective esoterikos, which means belonging to an inner circle. This image of entering into an inner circle isn't entirely metaphorical either. Oftentimes, the knowledge hidden at the bottom of these icebergs is only known to the most passionate people in the community. So coming to understand this information is almost like rising up through the hierarchy to be among the most dedicated. Or at least, that's how our brains might be interpreting it. Another point Colin makes has to do with retention and structure, which I agree with entirely. The meme acts as a framing device to allow large chapters in the form of layers, which are further broken down into individual entries. Despite these videos having ridiculously long runtimes, this structure makes it very accessible, since there are loads of opportunities to stop and take a break. It's also very easy to find yourself finishing one of these long iceberg videos without even realizing it. The topics become increasingly dark or obscure the further along you get, so they often become increasingly interesting, and further reinforce that sense of entering into an inner circle of enthusiasts. There's also just the sheer length itself, which might initially seem like a bad thing, but actually works in the format's favor. What works on YouTube has changed a lot over the years. Early on, short sketch comedy videos were the way to go. Then, Let's Play commentaries took over the scene, since you could pump them out quickly and exceed that 10 minute threshold for more ads. Now, for a large community of YouTube, I think long form content has become king. YouTubers like Summoning Salt, H Bomber Guy, and Amp Lemon have shown that you can be enormously successful on this platform by making feature length content about even the most obscure topics. Take a look at Vsauce, the best to ever do it. Six years ago, his videos usually sat around the 5 to 10 minute mark. Lately, his videos have been pushing 30 minutes. Why did this shift happen? 
Well, in 2018, TikTok became available worldwide. It took internet culture as we knew it and completely pummeled it into the dust. But the real innovation wasn't just short-form vertical videos. It wasn't even the algorithm that perfectly predicts what you want to watch at any given moment. The real innovation fundamentally changed the viewer's relationship with the content. On YouTube, you open up your home page or your subscription box, and you see a bunch of titles and thumbnails. You look through those for a while until something catches your attention, and then you click on it. On TikTok, you open the app and you're already watching a video. You don't click on anything. The decision is no longer, what should I watch, but should I keep watching? The difference is subtle, but it changes everything. YouTube doesn't have this luxury. Well, unless you consider shorts, but those are mostly just reposted TikToks anyway. As a YouTube viewer, you're not being fed content as aggressively as TikTok. It's a much more passive dynamic, where you need to actively choose to watch something. And decisions are hard, man. I don't want to have to think about what I want to watch. Just inject the content straight into my veins. That's where long-form content comes in. You find a video, throw it on, and boom. No more decisions for over an hour. You can eat your food in peace, and rest assured that you won't run out of entertainment. You won't find yourself halfway through your lunch without anything to turn off your thoughts, desperately scrolling with your greasy finger to find the next source of stimulation. So that's why I think this format works, but I also have some bones to pick with it. First off, because of the nature of obscure knowledge, a lot of these icebergs have entries that are borderline impossible to research or describe definitively. This happened to me a number of times in my philosophy iceberg. So I'm not totally sure what this one refers to. Some iceberg videos even incorporate a confidence level system throughout the entire video to address this. In my video, I would just admit that I wasn't totally sure about one entry or another. This is bad. Nobody cares what you think this obscure thing might be referencing. This point also goes hand in hand with joke entries. The iceberg meme I used for my philosophy iceberg had the entire final layer dedicated to Eastern philosophy as a joke, poking fun at the fact that the rest of the material was entirely Western. I didn't mention this layer at all, because I didn't want to end my video by explaining a joke. Iceberg memes on the internet often incorporate loads of these jokes or tongue-in-cheek entries that have absolutely no obscure knowledge tied to them. Including them in these kinds of explainer videos not only breaks up the pace, but also completely deflates the joke. Because as we all know, when you explain the joke, it's no longer funny. To bring back the analogy of entering into an inner circle, these joke entries are the equivalent of meeting up with a group of people who share an inside joke. Once they actually explain the joke, it's not going to be funny to you in the first place. You had to be there. It doesn't serve to assimilate you deeper into the group. It actually alienates you further. I tried to rectify some of these problems when I made my psychological experiment iceberg. Instead of pulling an iceberg meme from the internet, researching each entry and explaining them all, I constructed my own iceberg from scratch. This allowed me to control the pacing of the video, include things that I thought would actually be interesting to a viewer, and leave out all the joke entries or the things I wasn't sure about. This might not be in the spirit of the meme, but I think it leads to a much better video at the end of the day. But this video still had a problem. I decided to structure it such that the final layer would include the most dark and unethical entries. I did this in part to honor the meme format, since it conveys that sense of descending further into the obscure darkness. But it also ended things on a massive bummer. I received a number of comments from people who talked about how sad and depressing those final entries were, and that makes sense when you consider how humans process information. There's a psychological phenomenon known as the serial position effect. When you present someone with a list of words and ask them to remember them, they are able to recite the items at the beginning of the list and the end of the list much more effectively. When the final lawyer presents his closing arguments to the jury right before deliberation, those arguments will be much more salient in the jurors' minds. Even though the dark entries of my iceberg only accounted for about a third of the video, people will still remember that section much more vividly than the rest. When they reflect on that video later, they will probably remember it as being fairly depressing and sad. There's also a problem with the more educational icebergs, like the ones I've made. When you present a bunch of unrelated concepts from the most well-known to the most obscure, you're not really giving any context to the information, which isn't effective pedagogy at all. The experiments I talked about in my iceberg are all fairly insightful, I think, but they're also presented in isolation. When I talked about change blindness, for instance, I didn't talk about all the broader mechanisms of attention and visual perception. It's like reading the Wikipedia page about Winston Churchill, having never heard of World War II. This problem is basically unavoidable with the format. You can't present information as effectively as you could in a university class. Because it's not a university class, it's a meme. 
I fear that without the context, most of this information is never actually consolidated by the viewer. But the optimist in me would say that these videos succeed when they spark an interest in the viewer and prompt them to research these topics themselves. I do think icebergs are good for this medium overall. It has some problems, but I think there are ways to address some of them and make the format better. It's a useful tool for creators to structure information. It's also a very approachable format and can result in viewers checking out subjects that they might have otherwise avoided. So with that being said, please watch my other videos too. I put a lot of effort into them and I think they're a lot better. And do the same for the other iceberg creators too. Also click these buttons if you want. Thanks.